Done. Used a bit of heat to get some of the bubbles out. Bit of a faff, and if I want to take it down, I'm going to have to uh, peel, peel off and expose the screw heads. So <laughs> I can't open. But the LEDs will never go wrong, or at least the LED strip won't need replacing. Bit of a gamble. Smart though. <laughs> build. Um, this doesn't happen very often but it's a big uh, important occasion so I thought I'd share it with you. This one's come from Prague, Czech Republic, not, not Prague, Czech Republic, <coughs> thanks to a good friend of mine Chris. Cheers Chris, big up and it's full of blue boxes. Look at this. Wow. So, I've got some stuff in here for Ray, admittedly, it's not all, all mine. Battery monitor, I think that's Ray's. Can't remember if I ordered that or not. try and document as much as I can of the build of the electrics cupboard plus all my connections and wiring etc. Um, I've got a friend with whom I'm doing a conversion for a private client and although the build is much less complicated than Walt it obviously involves electrics and right now it seems to me electrics is uh, well, particularly renewable and off-grid electrics is, a, is what everybody's after. So the more I can get my hands dirty with it, the better. On, um, on Walt, I'm trying to build a tilting solar panel, uh, which I'll also document because I'm hoping to be able to sell the system if it works as a kit, because you get so much more efficiency from a panel the solar panel that's um, pointing at the sun obviously so it's going to hopefully tilt both ways <coughs> so you won't have to worry about how you park up before you point the panel at the sun I'm, I'm just putting the, the supports in for the shelves for the batteries at the bottom of this cupboard and then above it I need to measure and cut a piece of wood which will be the main uh, block for mounting all of the uh, the gadgets, all the Victron gear, and um, that can be then be built indoors because I'll have I have a system whereby I'll be mounting that panel 
um, so I can remove it to get behind it when needs be. <coughs> anyway, <laughs> work continues. So this is the last bit of planning I've got to do. Um, it's for the electrics cupboard. This is going to be the back plate onto which I'm going to mount the various bits of kit that I've got. <coughs> and um, I've got it all mapped out already in 3D in SketchUp. So I kind of know what I need to put in and where. Um, so I'm just going to get the various bits and bobs I've got out and do a pencil outline around them so I know where they're going to sit on the board and then I'll fit them, figure out the wiring, whether I've got all the right wires I need etc because I've ordered a bunch of wires, drill all the holes I need etc and then take it all back off again and paint it and put it back together or at least that's the plan for now. So there's the inverter the a split charge relay, some breakers, the RCD, the fuse board, MPPT, and some switches and gauges. <coughs> Let's get to work. <laughs> So as well as the approximate layout for all the um, components within the electrics cupboard, um, I've done a schematic, well, layout, I've done a, sch a schematic, so it's this that I begged and borrowed from other, various other sources to build out the system and the various components that I need, and I'll share this as a PDF or something. Um, greens, green text is all the stuff that I've bought um, and then I've done a, a layout <coughs> as well so from the bottom, two batteries on the bottom go up to above the shelf we've got the bus bars uh, negative and positive all my breakers including my isolator my uh, the 240 RCD the inverter fuse box the charger reader, the relay, etc. So the, <laughs> it's kind of coming together. The um, I need to get the breakers. They'll be down here. Isolator, RCD, inverter, fuse box. That's the 24 volt inverter for the underfloor heating. That's the solar charger. So we've got a we've got one more breaker to fit in here. It's looking a bit tight. Let's go over. This needs a lot of space on either side for wiring, um, but that's kind of what I had in my drawing, so we'll see whether it continues to work that way. <coughs> so I'm just figuring out the bus bar, bus bars, got this um, length of copper bar which I've already cut down to fit the board. We've got these feet, which are M4s. Um, <coughs> so there's two on either end, and I've got six connections in between. So it's going to be quite tight, actually. 16 divided by eight is every two.
I've just finished that, but it's unbelievably hot now. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised having cut eight holes in it, but both of them are really retaining the heat from the drill. I hope those isolators uh, do their job. <laughs> Of the last cupboard. Can't believe we're getting to this stage. Just need to cut this down and then put the panel in. We need space for another panel. Whatever. Good, need some more bradite. <laughs> okay, so I've had a fun weekend of turning this into this. ordered a few more bits but um, principles are getting there it's complicated I'll run through it all step by step when I've got everything cut and ready to fit but um, it's not easy <laughs> doing uh, wiring because we've got both 240 volt obviously shore power and 240 volt inverter power so there's some pretty chunky cables going between the various components there. But then we've also got DC from the battery bank at the bottom here. And um, we obviously need to switch automatically between shore and inverter power to the 240 volt outlets in the van, uh, depending on the requirements and what, what we're connected up to. And then there's some extra complexity. We've got the 24 volt inverter for the underfloor heating. So it's getting there. Just trying to figure out. I've got this cable off because that's the power to the MPPT, and apparently it's not supposed to go via the isolator because that obviously isolates everything. And the MPPT may need to be well, it will need to be continuously connected to power to charge the batteries. Um, there'll also be an isolator. Oh, which I haven't made space for, for the solar panel. So everything's measured up and all the wires are cut to the right length. And I'm just taking it apart now and marking up where everything sits. Um, I'm then going to take it into the van and cut the length down to fit. I'm possibly also going to cut the fuse holder, the blade fuse holder for all the um, 12 volt kit in the van, uh, cut it out and have it as a separate permanently fixed piece in the cupboard and then the rest of the panel will come away so I can get access behind should I ever need to. So um, I've got some holes to fill in for the screws that are screwed in the wrong position and then I'm going to paint the board with, with bradite and then fit it in place and wire it all back up and um, test it out. Oh one other thing, this is the control panel for the 12 volt switches that I might need out and accessible outside the cupboard. Water, to, water gauge, I figured that was the only other gauge I really needed and this is going to be the 12 volt charging um, battery DC and load monitor. So we see more of that later. Oh, 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 oh,
right, that's the moment of truth. First test fitting for the um, electrics panel in the electrics cupboard. So I just need to get this mess of wiring out the way to put the shelf in. There's going to be some holes drilled in that. And then this all disappears behind the electric panel. So I'm going to figure out, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have it hinged. So the panel I'm about to put in will, will be able to tilt forwards and be held so I have access to the back. But it's also got the 12 volt fuse circuit attached to the back permanently so it's more accessible or retrievable, one of the others. One of the other, so let's try fitting this. <laughs> Bear with me, it could fall apart as I'm doing it. It's not completely finished. I'm worried about it getting stolen, but it's, it's too heavy for that. And then above it is a shelf, obviously, and then that with a space for a blank panel above it. So it's the wrong way up to expand into. Should be okay, shouldn't it? Lots of fiddly wiring to do next. And uh, this is the, so this panel is going to be permanently fixed to the wall. Why did I decide to do that? I suppose it's because unwiring this would be, an, would be a nightmare, whereas this only has two wires. I unhook those and the whole panel can come forward and out. So you can see why I want it hinged and secured from the top, so it will hopefully do that when the doors open. Uh, what about the hinges? I need to think about that because of course there's going to be a cupboard door on the front here, flush. It will open out and it will need to have hinges mounted on that on that side wall. Maybe when I take it out I'll simply have to pull it that way. Oh maybe yeah maybe that's the way to do it. Okay well we'll see. Anyway time to fix that shelf, make the door front, anchor the batteries. Oh, I've got some ratchet straps coming to anchor the batteries. Good, test fitting, first test fitting complete. Okay, so that wiring is connected and runs on well with the water pipes at the front of the freshwater tank. Looking like a real bottleneck, unfortunately. I have, uh, I know there's more I could do to improve that, but I'm fairly sure now I've got the last cables running through there. I'll be able to tidy it up. It will look quite neat, but uh, you can see what I'm tackling. And I'm nearly ready to wire up most of the 12 volt uh, distribution block is wired. It needs to be tidied up, obviously. It really does, doesn't it? What a mess. Um, and then the main panel can go in over the front of it. <laughs> So, we had our first night in here last night and it was very comfy, worked really well um, it was a bit noisy because uh, after three great days at Easter of glorious sunshine and warm still air sitting out in the garden and enjoying it, the, uh, the, the weather broke and although it's sunny again out there now, a storm blew in overnight. So uh, I kind of lay 
<coughs> awake, pretty disturbed, restless, you know what it's like, a bit of excitement in there, um, new noises, uh, just things to think about obviously with the, with the build coming to a finale and um, Lola went off to sleep very quickly thankfully at the front here and we had Teddy in here as well our dog and he slept on Lola's bed for the first half of the night but then came and uh, jumped up onto my bed at the back there for the uh, second part um, but I slept so I slept solidly for four hours at the end of the night, which was good But um, everything worked except and this is really disappointing the underfloor the underfloor heating so um, I've got that Wired up as I think you've seen in my control panel uh, via a 24 volt inverter which is operated here so that's the power on and you can see the power is on here as well but um, so it's passing a current it's passing 24 volts out down through the lead down to the junction blocks positive and minus junction blocks under here and then down to um, some rubber mat, I can't show you now, I've shown you in previous videos anyway, some rubber mat under there and rubber matting that runs all the way down the corridor under the ply to the back of the van <coughs> and um, it's not giving off any heat. I've spoken to them about it and they claim because it's, uh, it's it draws 7 amps, they claim because it's a polymer it doesn't actually radiate heat you won't feel the heat the, the heat if you touch it but it will warm the air now, I've had it on twice now on a trial and um, it hasn't it just hasn't worked so that's really disappointing everything else is looking good though this uh, little screen is brilliant it's uh, it's 40 quid you can get them from China and um, at the moment you can see it's showing us 2.5 amps positive which is the feed from the solar panel um, feeding the batteries at 13.3 volts you can also see how close we are to the 120 amp hour capacity of the batteries which I've I've added myself it's this is all it's very customizable all this thankfully you can just skip up and down the settings on this side and change the various parameters I really haven't got familiar with it yet I've just got the the basic uh, functionality working but it's very good um, so everything else is working the solar power this is the PV cable coming in and down via a breaker to the MPPT um, bulk means it's absorbing power and float is when we'll when we get up to 13.8 it'll kick in as an excess um, I haven't tried the split charge relay yet which is why the brake is broken just because we haven't been able to drive off the drive which is a bit annoying the electrics DC fuse boxes a 12 volt DC fuse box is all wired correctly and working fine uh, nothing really much to say about that haven't tested the mains either because the plug is on the fence side of the van which is on the other side of the van so I can't get to it, which is a bit annoying. That'll be one thing I have to wait to do. The breaker works, the master breaker works. The um, the breaker bars work. So yeah, it's all it's all it's all operating as was originally planned, which is fantastic. And there's my two one one ten amp hour leisure leisure batteries. So very pleased with how the electrics worked out. Took a, took an age, age to get to the stage where I could test it all because just because you end up needing more bits than you uh, ever imagined <laughs> so for example one, some of the last things to go in were the switches and here we have for example a master override for, a for the fridge let me show you the fridge uh, let me just open up a few more blinds a bit more lighting so the fridge is at 
Um, well, it's higher, it's off the ground, which is such a relief. I'm, for, I'm forever bending down to get into fridges, just as I have been on the Florida. So I've gone for this new isotherm, same brand, it's Dometic, um, same brand as the Calorifier. Um, it draws very little power. I think it will draw a little bit more, especially on startup. But it's very energy efficient and it's huge compared to anything that I've had before. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to first trip when we get to use that. Um, so that's the main override for that. Fan is the fan above the rear bed in the skylight, which isn't plumbed in yet. Um, that will be the water pump, which I still haven't tested. But there's space for expansion. Still need to get the water gauge working. The um, the lights are all wired in. I think you've probably seen those and working just fine. The only thing to comment on on these is that when they're dimmed, they um, they send a buzz <laughs> through the stereo. So that's something I need to figure out how to isolate. Uh, I, need to, no, I need to tidy up up here, but the stereo is now in. That was a real shoehorn job. But I've gone for one of these fancy uh, Bluetooth Mechless uh, DAB Spotify etc. Uh, head units. It's really good, not too expensive, sounds great. And you'll have also seen that it's wired through a wired to a sub, <coughs> which is under here. So the speaker cabinets at the front might need a bit of work. They're looking really tatty. Definitely a version 2 coming. These grills just Velcro on at the moment. And the Velcro actually comes away when you pull them off, so it's a bit rubbish. And there are rear speakers as well at the back. Under here. So we can have uh, adult radio listening. Need a curtain for that. <laughs> um, these lights are great. Let me just... Really good, they've got two brightness settings and USB on both sides for uh, for plugging in uh, whatever you want to recharge, so they've been really good. The fan, this is the fan switch for the kitchen fan, that just needs adjusting because it's flicking the fan still. In the shower room we've got a PIR light on, the, on a little sensor there which is cute. And that's also powering the little fern in here when that, when that comes on. So bathroom is looking good. Not tested yet. Um, the only other things to test from an electronics point of view will be electrics point of view. Will be the 240 outlets and the water pump when the um, sink is finally plumbed in. I'm still waiting on a few bits which have taken longer to come through because of the lockdown. And that's it on the electrics. Um, the solar panel on the roof is the only other thing that I want to get working properly. Um, I think I am going to keep it despite the extra height. So I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put another blanking panel in the top here and have two rocker switches, three positions, so neutral and then up and down. And that will control the left and the right um, linear actuator on the solar panel. So I'll just have to lean out or look out, I don't know, do what, when I operate the solar panel to make sure that I'm pressing the right side because if I press the wrong side it could flick the panel off the roof which would be an absolute disaster. So maybe there's a bit more thinking to be done about that but um, yeah I think that's going to be a real blessing having all that extra power. So th those LED strips they use 5 amps. I mean, I know there's a lot of them. There's one, two, three at the back, four at the front, five at the front. But uh, that's 5 amps. That actually draws more than the uh, underfloor heating, which is amazing. Oh, well, at least it's being put back in. So, yeah, that's it. Electric second fix done and dusted.